Florida, site of the first major volleyball tournament of the year. Why? A $250,000 purse. I'm Lynn Shackelford along with Paul Sunderland and Tim Hovland. Eight of the AVP's best teams are here, and we're down to two. We're ready for the championship. Let's go to the player introductions and Sam Lugana. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Clearwater Beach and the Jose Cuervo Go Crown Championship! Coming up, a battle for $100,000 on the White Sands of Florida. We're all ready. The players are ready. The refs are ready. We want to know. Off of Copacabana Beach, please welcome Jose Loyola. His teammate, also out of South America's Copacabana Beach, the Little Angels, Anchino Eduardo Basia. Their opponents, both from the U.S. of A. From San Diego, California, out of the University of San Diego, please welcome Big Mike Whitmarsh! And his teammate from Manhattan Beach, California, out of San Diego State, please say hello to Mike Dodd! This is the big one in Florida! This is the Quill! a look at what they are playing for. $100,000 for first place, and here it comes. <laughs> pennies from heaven. Well, not exactly pennies. We're not talking 100,000 pennies. The skydivers, always the prelude to the championship match here at the Corvo Gold Crown. They're bringing down $100,000. The medals for first, second, and third. And the game ball. We talk about how difficult it is to play volleyball out here in the wind. These guys are unbelievable coming down center court, dead on target. Much to the light of the crowd, a big round of applause as they're right on. And it's Jose Loyola of Brazil, one of the finalists, coming out and taking a look at what he's going to be playing for. All right, let's take a look. There they are. Gold coins by Jose Cuervo. A game to 15 points. Mike Dodd will start it off. This is Brazil versus the United States. Young versus the old. The veterans are Dodd and Whitmarsh from Southern California. The Brazilians aged 23 and 24. Dodd and Whitmarsh have won a bundle of money in tournaments. The Brazilians have never won outdoors. They finished second in a Cuervo in Santa Cruz. Big contrast here between the two teams. And Gino at only six feet even from Brazil puts it away for a side out. You got an early favorite here, Paul? Well, I like the Brazilians early because Dodd and Whitmarsh had to play that extra very tough match against Karch Kirai and Scott Akatebi, winning 11-9. But Angino and Loyola won the round, Robin, and the right to advance straight into the finals. That's one of the great arm swings you'll ever see. Loyola from Brazil, age 24. He can really whip it, and he does there, and they hit the scoreboard first, one to nothing. And Gino and Loyola starting on the good side, and in spite of the block by Mike Whitmarsh and Mike Dodd, Loyola just ripping the ball into the open court, and Angino putting some heat on the jump serve to start this match. Angino in the hat hits it, and Whit can only just flip it up in the air in front of him, and Dodd cannot come over to handle it, and it's two to nothing. The real test for Angino and Loyola is how will they handle the pressure of the moment. Mike Dodd has been there time and time and time again in huge tournaments. He knows what this atmosphere feels like. The Brazilians, this is their first time in this sort of setting, but they're off to a pretty good start. How they start, I think, will determine their success in this match. Jim Leonard, our referee, whistles the ball in play. Good serve by Angino down the line. Dug by Loyola. And the yard! The man with the headband, watch that arm swing. He can really snap it down if there's no block. 
he, like a basketball player putting on a show in warm-ups with dunks, he puts on a show here with straight down hits in warm-ups. Nobody jumps higher. He's getting his head almost over the net, out of the soft sand. Net eight feet high, exactly the same as indoors. Three to nothing. it off the block. Dodd does for a much needed side out. Dodd Whitmarsh are on the bad side. They've got to score a couple from the bad side. They've got to stay, you know, in contact, as they say in marathon racing. You can't let the Brazilians get out to too big a lead early. Tight set. Good shot by Anginho. Away from Dodd, who was breaking down the line corridor. And here is probably, well, undoubtedly the best jump serve of the four players. Touch the net? No. That sets off a little bit. Nice cut by Mike Dodd. Well, that had to be precise. As you said, the set was back. Mike Dodd's won 64 tournaments during the course of his incredible career. Over $1.1 million. Gino at six feet even has had to learn at an early age down in Brazil to work the ball around the court because he doesn't have the big power game. He can hit pretty hard, but he has got all the shots. He's got to pass extremely well, take pressure off his partner Loyola and set the ball very short distances. Oh, stop! And Gino's got it, and he sets. Crowd likes it. The Brazilians are fun to watch some good plays, and Dodd already says, I'm worn out on that play. Yeah, Mike Dodd is going to take probably the first of his four allowed sand timeouts. Loyola blocking with Marsh's little roll shot down the line. Almost a double contact there. Look at the great run. You talk about fresh legs from Anginho. This is their eighth match in two days. They've had a chance to rest. Well, Dodd and Whitmarsh were playing that elimination match for third against Kirai and Akatubi. As we said, eight of the best teams in the world going head-to-head -head in a round-robin format. They played three round-robin games this morning, and then Dodd and Whitmarsh, by virtue of the third best record in round-robin play, they eliminated Karch Karai and Scott Akatubi 11-9 to earn the right to move into the final. That's right, Karch Karai and Scott Akatubi, not Kent Steffes. He's out with shoulder surgery. Karai played this week with Akatubi, first time they've teamed together, and they take a third here in the Cuervo. Nice shot. Tough pass. And Gino serving the ball up into the headwind, goes almost over the shoulder of Mike Dottie. Pirouettes makes the pass and then recovers quickly enough to hammer the ball down the line. Dodd and Witt cannot go scoreless on the bad side. They've got to get on the scoreboard, stay in touch with the Brazilians. the good side is when you're serving into the wind watch the serve of Loyola here with the top spin the ball will go hard and then right over the net and dip Dodd Whitmarsh giving him a lot of middle of the court and Gino obviously at the net not as effective on the block when his partner is uh, serving he does block sometimes but at six feet against six foot seven, that's a mismatch. Right, and Gino just very late in making his move. The ball drifted inside. He's got to jump way into the cross court, anticipate the angle of the ball. Dodd's there. They can get their four to one side change right here. Nope. Maybe. Tight set. And there's the mismatch. They want a reach over, they don't get it. So Dodd and Whitmarsh get on the scoreboard. The players have changed sides on multiples of five. It's four to one. The Brazilians lead. We are driving excitement. And by new finish, the once a year car polish, rated number one by Consumer Magazines. Welcome back to Clearwater Beach, Florida. I'm Lynn Shackelford, along with Paul Sunderland. 
Well, we've seen uh, one side change right now. The Brazilians, as expected, right. as they have in the whole tournament, look good. Well, they look very good. They're playing with a lot of energy. But the most important thing is they came out with some composure. Not overexcited, playing against such an experienced team led by Mike Dodd. The first side change was very important. They had to take advantage of the good side. They take the 4-1 to one lead. Now we'll see what happens with the next side change. Dodd and Whitmarsh have to stay in contact like a marathon race. They can't let the Brazilians get out to too big a lead. They're veterans, Dodd and Whitmarsh. And they're one team, I think, that can come from behind. The Brazilians, though, needed the good start, and they got it. No doubt about it. Dodd and Whitmarsh will not panic. Right. Mike Whitmarsh has been in the first row. He got a bad back. He's been down. He's been injured. The big question, will he have enough to mount that comeback, which That's obviously takes more energy should they fall behind? I think they've got to get right back into this match after this next side change. He's got to block some balls and slow down the Brazilians. Mike Dodd has gone to the jump serve with some success. A few fans out there on, near the water in Clearwater Beach, but most of them are right here with their eyes focused on this championship final. And Dodd is using the jump serve pretty well into the win there. It won a semifinal match, in fact, over Karch Karai and Scott Akatow via 10-9. Dodd served an ace from where he just served that to win the game and put him in the final a chance at $100,000. Lose that match, don't get to the finals, go home with 20. That's what Kirai and Akatubi won. Nice block by Loyola. He was all over that. It was, it was a low set. First point on the board from the bad side. And Genio and Loyola will not be able to serve nearly as tough right now. Dodd and Whitmarsh have to side out and then score effectively. tap down by Dodd. Little contact under the net. You know, these four players are all very close friends. Mike Dodd and Mike Whitmarsh, obviously very close because they've teamed together very successfully the last couple of years. And Mike Dodd, along with Tim Hovland, sort of adopted the Brazilians when they first came to the United States, showed them the ropes, helped them get settled here in the United States, and helped them show the way on the AVP tour. And the Brazilians are popular and well-liked. They train against each other down in Manhattan Beach at Marine Street quite often. But there always they, comes they a, know each other. There always comes a time when the student passes the mentor, and this may be a passing of ships. The Brazilians only 23 and 24 years old, respectively. They just need that one big win to get that confidence. Tap down the line. He got it through the block for a side out. Five to two, the Brazilians. They lead here in the game of 15. See, and Gino is just slapping the ball at Mike Whitmarsh. And Whitmarsh frustrated because he knows all he's got to do, you have to lead with your hands. Don't lead with your forearms. Get your hands down and over the net. You can block that ball. I don't know. Great serve. Just looks like it's the Brazilian's day. And Gino and Loyola on the bad side right now, but Loyola really feeling it. Going for a tough serve inside out down the sidelines, and aces Mike Whitmarsh. Big lead because not only is it 6-2, to two, but they're doing it on the bad side, so you would think they'll garner some more points when they change sides again. So the Brazilian's looking strong. there at the net, taps it over as the set by Whitmarsh was missed and it went over. And Dodd looks to Whit as if, do you think we need to call a timeout? Seven to two. I nice. think yes. Nice block by Anginho and then unlucky play. Mike Whitmarsh bumps the ball going towards his partner but right back to Anginho for the knuckle. Almost tough serve down the line. Broken play and they get it down. Boy, did they ever need that side out. Seven to two, the Brazilians in front here. And Gino should not have blocked on that play. See the bad pass, the set well off the net. He should have gotten off the net, back and played defense. Much too, court, much, too much court for Whitmarsh to hit into on the broken play. Was it touched? No, no touch. So a point for Dodd and Whitmarsh. They hang in there. The Brazilians lead, though, here in Clearwater, 7-3. Into the camera, not bad. It's the final of the Corvo Gold Crown, and Tim Hovland is down courtside. Hov? Hey, Mike, you're down 7 3, going to the bad side. What are you thinking? Well, we just got to convert a couple on the bad side when we get chances, and Eugenio doesn't put the ball down. If we can get three or four and, and make a little move, uh, that's
that's about the only way, the only chance we have because these guys are fresh and they're playing good. Hang in there, get them back on the next side. Thanks, Bobby. Back to you, Paul. As we mentioned, Don and Whitmarsh had to play an extra game in the semifinal to earn the right to go into the final. In the round robin, the Brazilians were 7-0. Witt and Dodd were 4-3. So I would say the Brazilians are the big favorite coming in. But as we get closer to a victory for the Brazilians, Paul, I think you got to watch where they're going to get tense. That's right. But i got a real change in strategy for you. If I'm Mike Dodd and Mike Whitmarsh, I start serving Anginho short. You want him set close to the net. Right. Stop serving tough. Perfect pass. Good idea. Perfect set, like and then it gets Whitmarsh into the play every time as a blocker. Whitmarsh and Dodd, especially Mike Whitmarsh, maybe a little bit fatigued right now. I would stop serving tough. I would want Anginho set right close to the net, give Mike Whitmarsh a chance to block balls each and every time, try to make this a sprint, shorten the length of the match. Forget right. about tough serving for a change. And also a short serve almost guarantees a low, tight set. It's really tough for Loyola to set it back and high on a short serve. I would want everything right up close to the net if I were Dodd and Whitmarsh. That's where Mike Whitmarsh can take control of this match. Well, we know one thing. They're going to work Anginho as much as they can. 7-3. Anginho has received Loyola. every serve of the match until that one. Yeah, Loyola moved over to take it, and Dodd reads it. Good dig. Hits it right at Loyola, and Loyola dug it. That's wow. a huge play. That's got to be discouraging. Well, absolutely. Dodd put the hammer down as hard as he could from the left side. Loyola with a perfect read. You rarely see Loyola play in defense because he's always at the net blocking. Perfect technique. Knees bent, hands forward, drives his hips through the ball, pops that thing straight up in the air. Looked like a superb defensive player. Trying to go over the head and not have the wind blow it out. That's a tough shot. Eight to three now. The Brazilians really going out in front. Blocked by Loyola. Nine to three. They're making it look easy here. Dodd and Whitmarsh, they got to call timeout. Well, got to take a 20, have to do something to change the tempo of this match. Look at how high Loyola's getting over the net. Mike Dodd, usually one of the best players out here at avoiding terminal plays, getting stuffed, hitting balls out of bounds. He loopies one long to cause his team to lose a point and then get stuffed. On the brief timeout, we'll take one also. Be right back. to three, and Gino with the lead, puts the ball in play. Could go to 10 to three. Witt's got it, no, he can't get it, and Witt looks real tired, real discouraged, not doing much with the hit there. Well, the ball control is gone. Bad pass by Mike Whitmarsh leads to another point scoring opportunity that Angino and Loyola convert upon. Gino and Loyola looking for their first ever victory outdoors on the AVP Tour. They came just a couple of years ago. Everybody asking, who are these guys? They have tremendous talent. Ball blows out. Had kind of a knuckle screwball spin on it instead of the top spin. Everybody talking so much about the AVP and their participation in the Olympics. And Gino and Loyola very much in limbo with their own Brazilian Olympic Federation in terms of their participation in Atlanta Are representing they? their own country. Well, there's a lot of good beach teams in Brazil. But they're, they're the, the best. Olympics. They're, they're the best. best. Yeah. And they're showing it right now here in Clearwater Beach in the Cuervo Gold Crown. They lead it 11 to 4. Ball's inaugural showing in the 1996 Olympics in Atlanta. And as is often the case, the dispute puts the players against the governing bodies. It's been repeated often in other sports, who and how are the best teams selected to represent our country? In a long-running battle with the International Federation of Volleyball, the best Americans, all members of the AVP, feel it's flawed at best, maybe even ridiculous. Yesterday, Paul Sunderland found out that they decided to take a stand. 
everybody seems to agree, and worldwide, not just in the United States, the AVP players are the best players in the world. What happens to the credibility of the competition in Atlanta if you guys aren't there? Well, I think it won't have any credibility, but the Olympics will happen, definitely. Even if the AVP is not there, we realize that they are going to happen. But uh, at this point, we have to see. There are a whole range of options we have from not playing in the Olympics to accepting the current system as it stands, as unfair as everybody agrees it is, and play. How, where do the fans fit into this? You know, the fans get left out of the hockey strike and they get left out of the baseball strike. And I don't want to categorize this as a strike because I'm familiar with some of the issues and I don't think it's that. But the fans have been very important to the growth of the sport around the United States and the world. What happens to them if you guys don't play? Well, we're out here every weekend playing. Uh, so if they go to Atlanta and miss us in the Olympics, they can come out to Florida the next week and catch us. We're, we're all over the place. They, they can find us. Don't worry. What we want is the best Olympic team possible. I think that's in the fans' interests to have the best teams there to best represent the United States. If we have, have less than the best teams, I think it hurts the fans' interests and it hurts the players' interests. With the injury to your partner, Kent Steffes, does that play into this situation in any way, shape, or form? I know that he was very keen on playing in the Olympic Games. You've been there twice, won two gold medals. Um, Kent was pretty fired up about going, doing whatever it took, and I was not very excited about going to play on foreign soil in a lot of events to try to get a berth in the Olympics. Uh, him having been hurt makes it a little easier for me to do what I wanted to do, and that's stay home more and try to play on the AVP tour, be closer to my family. Paul, I see no quick solution no. for either side in this problem. Well, it's it's high-stakes poker right now, and uh, beach volleyball is the absolute growth area of the sport of volleyball around the world. International Federation wants to gain control. The AVP players, to a man, want to compete in Atlanta, but they feel that the qualification process is unfair, it's restrictive, it's been shoved down their throats, and it's just not a fair process, and there's just a lot more to be heard, and hopefully the best American players like a Karch Kirai, a Kent Steffes, a Mike Dodd, a Mike Whitmarsh, an Adam Johnson, a Randy Stoklos, among others, will be on the court for the United States with the same applying, of course, to the Brazilians. The Olympic Games, you want the best athletes available who want to play out on the court, but it's going to be very uh, contentious between now and then. Two straight points for Dodd and Whitmarsh. Dodd says, come on, crowd, get behind us. Hey, the crowd is there. The we question, need you, and the, the crowd wants a close game. Absolutely. They want more great volleyball. They've had over two days of it, including the qualifier here for the Cuervo, just to get into the field. The question is, now, do Dodd and Whitmarsh have enough to mount that comeback emotionally and physically? 11-6, to six, two straight points for Dodd and Whitmarsh. Can they come back? Blocked and out. Side out for the Brazilians. It'll be Loyola to serve. Usually in Brazil, you go by one name. His full name, Jose Geraldo Loyola Jr. Getting a break with Narsh and Dadar as Loyola has now missed two straight serves. And they need, it's 11 to 6, they need an 11 9 side change. Maybe they could survive with a 12 8. I don't side think so. Change. Not going to the bad side. I think they need 11 9. Dodd, knowing he needs a great serve, misses it. The answer for Dodd and Whitmarsh is to take care of their own side of the court. They've got to pass, set, hit the ball, side out for a long time, then they get back into this match. Get a little bit more rhythm to their side out game. Easier when they're on the good side. Witt's 32, Dodd's 37. You usually hit your peak between 28 and 33 in beach volleyball. So the Brazilians aren't even there at 23 and 24. Is that an ace? Yes, it is. That is the best way to come back when you're a little bit tired. The flat, to seven. the flat footed spader, but not so bad being on your tippy toes if you're six foot seven. Tattoo in the sideline. Witt again with a long run. Good shot over the top. Boy, that was a beauty. A good set by Loyola and Andino with a nice shot over the block. And Loyola, who has missed a couple serves now, see if he can get one in. Good little sky hook by Whitmarsh. He got the call. 
Absolutely. Key call by Mike Dodd after he bumps set the ball to good location. Tell his partner where the open area of the court is. Angino blocking that time. Loyola playing defense. Loyola not able to cover quite as effectively in the backcourt. We've already seen him play good defense. Got to serve that one down the middle. And Angino just using that shot. Good shot maker as he shows it here. He'll go back and serve. 11 to 7 here. $100,000 to the first place team. $24,000 split for the second place team. Loyola is setting the ball very well right now. They're working on Whitmarsh. Dodds dug it. Got to hit it in two. He hit it out. Oh, remember that play. Look at Dodd and Whitmarsh. A gift from heaven. Or as Dodd says, the volleyball gods. Oh, that may shake up the Brazilians a little. That was a big opportunity. Loyola trying to just destroy the ball that time. If he puts that ball away, this match is over. The Brazilians would roll. A free arm swing to go up 12-7. I agree. The Brazilians right now hoping for something to happen as opposed to making it happen as they did earlier in the match. Dodd and Whitmarsh taking a 20-second timeout. Once again, slowing the pace. Right, they're really slowing the pace. Between serves, moving very slowly here, trying to draw it out. And Dodd's been there before. And let the Brazilians stew a little bit on that missed opportunity. In the old days in beach volleyball, before the shot clock, these guys would play on Sunday night, and they'd turn the headlights on to finish the games down on the beach. They'd play all day long, and Dodd was a part of that scene. And Gino cut cross court. Dodd is there. And Loyola's thinking, right now, I made the one great save. This is a per not a perfect set, but near perfect. And Loyola trying to send this beach back to South America. Missed it long. Block, but wide. Oh, Whitmarsh was all over it, too, and he knows it. I think pretty good idea going back to Loyola, thinking that he might have still been having his concentration on that last point that he missed. And Gino's been very steady. Got to mix it up, serve Loyola maybe a little bit more down the end of this match. He's the more emotional of the two, as you indicated. Good idea. Whitmarsh is passing much better. And two, Dodd puts it away. They're playing much better. They're getting real in a real comfort zone on this side, the good side, with the wind in their face. Okay, Mike Dodd is going to try to serve right into that corridor between the two bleachers that are opposite him. That's where the wind is unobstructed, blowing between the two bleachers. Try to get it up into that stiff breeze. There it's it a high is. One. Oh, good set by Angino with his hands. Yeah, genio has got great, great paws. Sets the ball extremely well. Scott Akatubi, a great setter. Brent Frohoff and Genio, of course, Randy Stoklos. And Brian Lewis may be the best right now. He's to set for the Brazilian national team. Serving Whitmarsh every ball. Doug, and it's wide open court, and Genio on two puts it away. 12 to seven big point right there how great a play by Angino takes all the pressure off of his teammate doesn't have to set him sees that Whitmarsh and Dodd are completely out of court nice dig by Loyola it would have been a long run for Loyola and Gino tremendous composure on that play outside out but the game is ready to be won by the Brazilians they just have to learn how to close it off They've never won outdoors. As you indicated, they won this year indoors. So they've put a crack in the door. They're going to be changing sides here in a few moments, and the Brazilians will be on the good side, needing only three points to win, maybe even less. Dodd's got it. Not a good set, but Dodd knows how to put it away in any event. They get four points over there on that side. They come back, they make a game of it, but the Brazilians lead 12 to eight. Today you got a 12-8 lead, you're on the good side, you're going to bomb a few serves, try and finish this thing off. You're right, Rob. That's you're going to try to do it, but not too much because we need to try to explore a little bit with Marsh. I think they, they play good semis, we tired a little bit, but we try to serve bomb. What did, you, what did it mean to win this tournament today? Big tournament? Oh, it's a lot because what they said, we never, won, never win. 
an interim man outside this, maybe it should be the first one. So he admits that's a big hurdle that they need to get over and that they've heard people talking about him. Well, everybody has great respect for their game and fears them every time that they go out and face the Brazilians on the court. Brazilians are still a young team. They've won many events internationally. They've won one now indoors. But when you have won a major championship like this, like a tennis player winning his first Grand Slam event, it takes you to a different level psychologically. Right. You know you can win the big one, and it changes your whole approach to your training, to the competition, and how the competition views you. This could take the Brazilians right to another level, if they're, and they're already right near the top. And you add also the injury to Kent Steffes. Shoulder surgery out at least eight weeks. Karch Karai having to play with a new partner. He did well this week. They finished third with Scott Akatubi. So that kind of opens up everything. The seedings are different. The matchups are different. And the Brazilians have really made use of that. They finished in the top four every tournament outdoors so far this year. Great save by Angino. And he knuckled it out of bounds. Oh, there's a break. And Dodd taking his time, says, hey, the crowd on this side, let's get behind it. And the crowd does. They come alive. Angino's been very successful so far. Not that many kills, but not getting blocked an awful lot. Frustrating with Marsh moving the ball around. Another point, and we're at 12-10. Now, the Brazilians have got to be thinking a little bit. Hey, they're working overtime right now because they remember Seal Beach last year when Dodd and Whitmarsh came back so dramatically to win that championship. And it was just in this fashion. Mike Dodd guessing correctly, reading, digging balls, Whitmarsh setting and blocking. We said at the top that they're the veterans and they wouldn't give up, and they haven't. Servant Angino deep now to take away the on-two attack. He hit out again. 12 to 11, and now... The significance there is the Brazilians cannot win it on the good side. The crowd loves the comeback as the Brazilians call a timeout. Mike Whitmarsh with the serve to Anginho. And Anginho taps it over the block. Whit didn't jump real high on that block. And Gino has received 24 serves so far in this match. Loyola only five. <laughs> He's got a great arm swing. We just don't get to see it off. I get to see it on the serve right there, though. Broken away. Gosh. 13 to 11. Two points away from the title are the Brazilians. You know, Doc Whitmarsh worked so hard to come back. Maybe just letting up on their concentration, that 5%. Mike Whitmarsh shanked that pass a little bit. Dodd could not make the save out of the net. Well, Loyola's got the good serve, and he'll try to crank it up again. You would think on a 13 to 12 side change, the game would be about that even. 14 to 11, if they can get a side change, the Brazilians will have an edge. Dodd and Whitmarsh just took another 20-second timeout. Mike uh, taking off his tank top. A valuable souvenir for someone, if you like XXL. And soaking wet, salty, sandy, dirty, grimy, but it's wits. <laughs> Loyola can't wait to put it in play. Good enough pass. And Gino's got it. Or Loyola dug it, rather. Gino with a 360-degree turnaround. Now, that's not an easy play, sports fans. If you try that at home in the sand, that's a tough shot. Well, that's called going for it. They're playing very loose and confidently right now, up only two against Dodd and Whitmarsh. That was a big opportunity. Tough pass. Oh, Whit was blocking, and he just missed the block. That was a golden opportunity because Angino was not reaching high over the net. The challenge for Angino at only six feet tall, hitting the ball time and time again against Mike Whitmarsh, Karch Kirai, Scott Akatsevi. He's putting the ball away because he gets so many serves. Big hit. Pounded, and it's caught the line by Dodd. 
sign of a veteran, the courage to take an arm swing like that and go for that angle. I tell you, I still would not mind seeing Mike Dodd block. Whitmarsh is making this long run. I think he's tired just to give a different look. Deep serve once again to Angina. Boy, he moves the ball around so well. Oh, cross does. court, cross court. I mean, that was perfectly placed. If you walked over there and dropped the ball, that's right where you'd drop it. And Genio can feel it. Doesn't often say much to his partner, Loyola, but really giving him some encouragement before this jump serve. Go! Yeah, like, get it in. I don't think those were the instructions, but they've got to concentrate on siding out. Will the Brazilians crack? They're two points away, but they're looking like big points right now for their first outdoor win. They're serving Angino so easily, just lobbing the ball right to him, but Dodd reads. Oh, Dodd up with a bad set, though. Witt's got a good up. Nice arm swing by Loyola. I like that. He says, now, crowd, how about that? Give us some support. <laughs> he doesn't get many chances to swing at the ball. People avoid him. I like the play. I think he took a little off, maybe. Just put it in play. Yeah, deep yep. middle. Dodd and Whitmarsh had two chances to score there. Dodd swinging away. Loyola's going to get it. In two. No, he's going to set Whit. Nice shot. Side out. And Witt and Don have really turned this around. This was a route. Look, now it's the Brazilians who are holding their shorts. You think they're feeling the pressure out here? They're not the ones that had to play the extra match. Do you take a chance here and serve Loyola? I would. I'd hope for the wild arm swing. I would. And Gino has been really solid siding out right now. I'd put one on Loyola. Now they're going deep to Gino. Just serving him too easy. Don and Witt behind, but they go to the good side. Crowds going crazy here in the Cuervo Gold Crown. Let's go down courtside to the hob. Mikey, you're down one point. You made a great comeback. How are you feeling, boy? Like a beaten, borrowed you-know-what. <laughs> hey, we just wanted it to get to this point, because now that we're here, the pressure's all on them. That's right, baby. You got a good side. You going to go back and give me a jump serve? Why not? It worked for us last match. Go for it, buddy. Thanks, Bobby. And Mike this is Dodd. the reaction when they hit, and Gino hit the ball out to make it 13 to 12. And I think Angino and Loyola, not to repeat too often, but they're two points away from their first outdoor victory, their first Cuervo goal crown, and I think they've hit a little bit of a wall emotionally. They were up 11-3. to three. We talked about it. Dodd Whitmarsh would not go away. They would look for that opportunity to make a bit of a run. The key was they started passing the ball. They were able to side out, stretch the match out, make it a long, long race once again. Got, get, got back to the fundamentals. Good pass, good set. And Dodd said it. Now all the pressure is on Ingenio and Loyola. Whitmarsh and Dodd are on the good side. but their hearts are full. Dodd and Whitmarsh are out of gas. They're exhausted, but somehow finding a way. You've seen it before, win. Paul. They've come from behind so many times. Brazilians 11 to 2. They were down. 
down 11 to 3. An 11 to 2 run. They go up 14 to 13. One point away from victory. It may be all over. The Brazilians have got to call timeout if they've got anything left. I can't believe they're not. Do not take a full or 20 second timeout for the match and 100,000 bucks. Big swing, swing by NG. This tournament totally belonged to the Brazilians until about five or ten minutes ago. Unbeaten in the round robin, just coasting 11 to 3. Mike Whitmarsh has got to be very careful of his sideline. Loyola's aced him twice down the sideline. set by Angino, but a couple of balls hit long here towards the end have Crowd. given Dodd and Whitmarsh a chance. Crowds really enjoyed this here in Clearwater Beach, Florida. Hope you have second time championship point. Dodd will go to that big blooper. A seagull actually bothered him. He pointed at it. He's got to serve this ball. He can't let this one drop. Oh, almost an ace. Fumbling right there at the net, a chance to win it, and it goes awry. Mike Dodd saw championship right here, but his partner Mike Whitmarsh could not pull the ball back off the net. Mike Dodd could see it, but it's out of his hands now. Patty Dodd sitting at home was counting the money. and setting well now, especially on this good side. I'm talking about Dodd and Whitmarsh. This is a team that has a lot of affection for each other. Dodd and Whitmarsh, as do the Brazilians. And Dodd and Whitmarsh just have that special chemistry that all great teams have, allows them to make a comeback like this. Oh, Whit misses the serve. I'll tell you, a lot of the crowd are just standing on their feet here. They know the end is near. 152 left in the game clock may not be a factor. Probably won't be. Tap down by Whitmarsh. And the crowd is definitely behind Whitmarsh and Dodd now as they once again have championship points. Whitmarsh has received 19 serves. He's jump blocked. <laughs> He has blocked and jumped as well on every point. They keep it an on Genio here. Tough jump serve. Good pass. Oh, the ball goes out and down as Angino falls back onto his back. Mike Dodd was reading cross court the whole way, thought there was no chance Angino could slice it off that finely, but that's the sort of composure and shots that Angino has. 13 serving 14. Of course, if they can tie it, you win by two here. Game to 15, win by two. Good night. Serving with now every ball. A back flipper, no good. Oh, bad shot selection by the Brazilians. Could have had an arm swing to tie it at 14-14. And they have cracked a little bit here, I think, under the pressure. And Gino is there. I think Loyola actually touched the ball on the block. This one had to come here for the championship once again. Dodd's going to get that. Give him a set, and this could be it. was unbelievable, but in all my years of covering the beach, that is the best comeback that I have ever seen. With so much on the line, down 11-3, they played the extra game and were exhausted.